Hey everyone, JT here. Since I published my video about the garden fence solar system yesterday, many of you have reached out with questions, so I thought I'd record a quick update and answer some of them. If you haven't seen yesterday's video, check out the links both above and below. Right, let's not waste any more time and let's dive into the questions. Mark reached out and asked, how are you attaching the panels to the fence? Well, that's a great question, Mark. The panels aren't directly attached to the fence. Instead, they hang over it using a hooking system. I used the version from EcoFlow, by the way, not sponsored, but other solutions are available. And in fact, you can get some great looking solutions from Amazon or from your local solar suppliers. The mounts consist of two parts, a rail system to hold the panel and a hook to go over the top of the fence or the balcony rail. They also provide in the pack some metal zip ties for additional security if you happen to be in a windy area. My garden's quite sheltered, so I don't think I'm going to need them yet, but I will wait and see as the winds pick up into the latter part of the year if I do need to secure them down. The beauty of this solution is it's non-permanent. The panels can be removed in just a few minutes, making it ideal for people who rent their properties or anyone dealing with uh, annoying HOA restrictions. The kit itself costs about £80 per panel. There are cheaper options available and DIY enthusiasts are probably able to knock their own version up pretty simply. But I wanted something that was going to be quick and easy to use and I know would work. Emma reached out and asked, what are the metal brackets at the bottom centre of each panel? you got a good eye, Emma. Actually, they're not really part of the solution. Solar panels work best when they're tilted towards the sun. Now, the amount of tilt depends on where you live in the world, how close you are or far from the equator. But we all know that solar panels on the roof of your house are generally tilted upwards towards the sun. When they're hanging vertically, they're not performing at their optimum capability. So those brackets that you see, I'm using them to tilt the panels up by about five degrees. Now this doesn't sound like a lot, but in my tests, the difference between them being completely vertical and tilted up by about five degrees increases the output by about 10%. So it's not a permanent solution. They are just the old brackets that I had um, holding the old system onto the roof. I'm just using them because they were available and I didn't have anything else to hand at the time. Jill reached out and asked me, what happens when the panels generate too much power on a really sunny day and the house can't use it all? Well, this is one of the disadvantages of the micro inverter. Now, if you have a battery attached and batteries are optional, you do not have to have batteries to make this system work. The excess power from the, the solar system will charge the battery. So here's my app. It's uh, currently a very sunny morning. Uh, my app is showing uh, the house is using 420 watts. That's the base load setting that I have. That will not change. It doesn't go up. It doesn't go down. It will supply 420 watts. The panels are currently supplying about 475 watts. So there's an extra 54 watts going into the battery to charge them up. Now, that's not a lot, but it's free excess power. And again, later on in the day, I can use that power should the uh, levels of power from the panels go down the battery can supplement them. Now, if you didn't have batteries, you just had the panels and the inverter, you've really got two options. You can either have the inverter tell the panels to reduce their output to whatever your baseload setting is. That's kind of a waste. Or you can have that excess power go into the house by turning up the baseload, up to a theoretical maximum of about 800 watts, which is the maximum the inverter can put out. Sending the excess back into the house when it's not being used is going to allow that power to, to basically escape um, back to the grid. Now, this is great if you've got an export tariff and you're going to get paid for that surplus. If not, you're just giving that free energy back to the energy providers. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this short video. And if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here for the next one.